So you're interested in the audiophile computer? Well, let's have a look. Instead of buying a player that was designed as an audio player, you might buy a computer and tweak it for audio reproduction. Although it is easy to have a computer play music, it's a lot harder to have it play music in good quality, let alone excellent quality. You need not only be knowledgeable in the field of digital audio, but also have a good insight in computer technology. Often the goal of using a computer as music player is to save money. But believe me that you always end up spending more money than planned. A good example is using the Raspberry Pi as a music player. It only costs 38 euros, but when you connect it directly to a DA converter over USB, you'll end up with a poorly sounding player, regardless the quality of the DA converter. Or you can add a DA converter on a PCB that fits directly on top of the Raspberry Pi. And again you'll end up with poor sound quality. Only when you add a very good clean linear power supply you can get decent results. But then the price is not far from a factory ready network player. Yeah, but you should use a proper computer you'll say. Yes, but what is a proper computer? I've tried to test general computer hardware as used by Windows and Linux only to find that they often are not suited for audio. And those that were remained available unchanged for only a short period. Sometimes the model was replaced after only three months, in other instances part of the computer were changed without leading to a change of model name. I even heard that a given computer model differed depending on the market it was sold on. So if you want to use Windows or Linux, you better find out what main board, video board, USB board and power supply in what combination performs well for audio. That usually means checking local websites for recent experiences of audio files. The only brand I know that keeps computer models fully unchanged for over a year is Apple. And they are always clear about the version of the model by naming the period it was introduced in. For instance Mac Mini mid-2011. Since they don't use standard boards and cards and apparently are uh, keen on proper EMC design, their computers are very popular among audiophiles. Especially the Mac Mini can be seen in many demo rooms on shows. Sometimes a laptop is used for convenience, but the driver electronics for the LCD panel is very noisy and therefore not the optimal choice, regardless of the brand. The iMac also does have an LCD driver electronics integrated, but since the internal is less cramped, it's less of a problem. Whatever computer you use, by far the best solution is to use it with an external DA converter. Inside a computer there always is a lot of high frequency noise that will influence the clock used for digital audio and thus cause jitter. See the Connecting Your DAC series for more info, you see the link in the top right corner. In the old computing days, say a week ago, the conventional hard disk was also called the Bernoulli drive, since Bernoulli's law, in gases the product of speed and density is constant, described why the read write head inside a hard disk can fly just above the surface of a disk. This knowledge serves no purpose, but since I'm a member of the Society for Preserving Useless Knowledge, I think you should know. So the question for an audiophile computer is whether Bernoulli drives conventional hard disks suffice or that solid state disk SSDs are a better choice. My experience is that an SSD system drive is very beneficial, but for storage of digital audio one or more conventional hard disks, indeed the Bernoulli type, works just as good. 
I will do a separate video on ripping and on adding metadata, but I must mention here that proper ripping is not difficult if you use the right combination of hardware, drivers and ripping software. If the computer doesn't fully understand the CD drive due to a weak driver, all kinds of things will go wrong. But if, that, if that's all taken care of properly, you can easy, easily rip a CD at even four volts the speed without one bit being faulty. A good test is to see if a CD is ripped at four volt speed or higher while the error checking function is set. It should theoretically take only one fourth of the playing time of the CD, but that's never the case. But if it takes longer than the normal playing time of the CD, you know you have a serious problem. Even when the ripping went perfect, the metadata might not be found or be correct. Sometimes the ripping software on your compu computer will prompt you to choose from a number of alternatives. Sometimes it will automatically add the wrong metadata or just add no metadata at all. Then you'll end up with an entry called unrecognized title that holds track 1, track 2 and so on. You can correct it by using special naming programs on the computer as for instance rename for Windows, uh, Music Brains for Picar for Windows and Mac or Yate for the Mac. If you're held back by the idea of ripping large quantities of CDs, it's good to know there are companies that offer that service. The going price is about one euro a disc, somewhat lower for larger orders and well negotiable for really big orders. You often have to take all your CDs out of their jewel cases or sleeves and put them on a spindle since the company loads them into a fully automatic ripping machine. Make sure you specify full CD quality as output format, FLAC, ALEC or AIF. WAV is also full CD quality but has limited metadata capabilities and therefore is the lesser choice. All four formats contain exactly the same audio data and should not sound different from each other. If there is a difference in sound, it's because your equipment, i.e. the player, works better with some formats and worse with others. This is not likely to occur these days, but has been an item with some British players a number of years ago. Recently, internet streaming services started offering full CD quality streaming. Big names here are Tidal and Cobus, and both even announced streaming at higher quality using MQA technology. Both offer applications for all popular operating systems, but a number of software players have compatibility with one or both services. For CD quality, any player that supports Tidal or Cobus will do. To use the high res music, you will need an MQA compatible DA converter. Now you don't need to rip your CDs, uh, which might save you a lot of money when you have it done by others. Nor do you need a shared volume on a computer or NAS, which with large collections might cost you, since you do need to back up everything or take the chance of having to rip it all again, which you don't really want. If you love music and like the convenience of choosing your music from your armchair and have the guts to find a proper computer, the audiophile computer might be a good solution for you. Or use it for playing music from quality streaming services like Tidal or Cobus. If you like even better than CD quality, you might want to add an MQA compatible DA converter for both Tidal and Cobus just started streaming in this format. Developments go quick, like the new MQA format. So if you want to remain informed, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there. You'll find the information below this video on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you on the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.